I was disappointed um, and still am. You know, I was captain of the club at the time and, and worked hard to get there. And But, yeah, I think it, it did happen for a reason. When Wayne rolled in the door, this club didn't have a lot of belief. There was a lot of people that had gone out of their way to make sure that we knew that we were chokers. We had a little bit of a thing there about the true believers. To all the true believers! If one thing changed that year, it might have been our year. Put two down for Nightingale! It just had that air about it where what we're doing, it wasn't going to be stopped. The Dragons win the grand final! It was just so much relief after waiting 31 years. We've been knocked down and got back up again each time. And now we're here! To all the true believers! Hi, I'm Jason Nightingale and you are listening to the True Believers Podcast. Today I'm sitting down with 2010 Premiership winning centre, Mark Gaznia. All right, well let's jump into it. Mr. Professional, let me know how I'm going here. Um, <laughs> I'm retired, mate. Yeah, you're retired. Reti- <laughs> retired from it all. Retired me, you retired footy. Well, back in our day, mate, we're starting with back in our day, pre my day. Our first questions are around... Sort of your, your glory years that, that, that weren't really in, in four, five, and six, um, where you had those, those uh, I suppose, big name teams, and, and sort of you were in your early years, but, but some of the, you know, Baz and those sort of guys in your team. Um, what, what was it like going from, through those years uh, and then into the next? You know what? When we we're playing, Gyps, it wasn't, um, you probably didn't realize how blessed you were to play in a team like that. I think as you got older, you probably realised that uh, how lucky we were, and maybe in hindsight, a couple of opportunities lost as well. Mm. Um, but you know, yeah, when I come into grade, we, we had a, as you know, you know, we had a really good group of um, that just post merger of, you know, myself, Benny Hornby, Matty Cooper, Jason Riles, Luke Bailey, like the majority that um, were kind of there for the core group of when we had a, a pretty good run. Besides getting the grand final, the majority of them were there and. They're all local juniors, and um, yeah, I, that's why, you know, without fast forwarding ahead too much, when we were lucky enough to win the premiership, there was a bit of sadness, I think, for those guys because despite the difference in surrounding circumstances of when they had to leave, they all loved the club, mm. uh, you know, and we're all we were really working hard for a premiership back then. But I think we're just a, a little bit young and maybe a little bit immature. Yeah, well, there was that sort of. Uh, look at it in the scheme of things. Then we had sort of a bit of a rebuild, and you bring in some gypsies and some <laughs> other young punks that that you had to deal with, and you became a bit more the old dog. Um, what were your memories of of sort of the the back end of the brownie era, seven and eight? Yeah, seven and eight were um, seven was hard. That's when I tore my pack and I had a really good preseason that year, and I was yeah. really looking forward to it. Uh, and playing then six then playing six, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and we felt like we had a pretty good team. The preseason went really well, and then. It fell apart. Um, I did my pack. We had some other injuries throughout the year. Mm. Uh, we never really got too much cohesion throughout the team. Mm. And then uh, 2008 was just, it was a mess that year. Mm. Um, it was quite, that was the whole, you know, saga around the contract. And, um, you know, I had to make some decisions in around June and July. And yeah. that led to me going. So, yeah, 07 and 08 were probably hard. It was funny because I went through really tough years Injury-wise, in 2002, 2003, 2004, I kind of missed 2002, 2003, and half of 2004 through injury. Um, but it was p- completely different circumstances around kind of 07 was injury, whereas 08 was more a distraction. So we did scrape into the eight, but um, you know we were never going to do too much damage. Mm, I think the fact that we did scrape in the eight off the back of a really quick rebuild in 07, we had so many, so much play movement. Like you said, a couple of injuries, we didn't do so well, and then eight scrape into the eight, but it was. It was a messy sort of year up and down. and Well, plus guys like yourself, Brett Morris, Josh Morris started, you know, they were probably more experienced by then than you had yourself. Dean Young was experienced by then, Benny Cray. Um, so some of your younger guys. Get yeah, younger guys were coming through even younger again. So those periods, uh, if you recruit right, are kind of, of benefit that, mm. you know, towards the back end, look how much experience we had in 2010. And we're lucky enough that the majority of us were local juniors as well. Yeah. And then we had the, the news, obviously, of... Um, Wayne coming that year and there probably wasn't much difference between the time around that sort of time frame it was pretty early that we knew Wayne was coming and yeah. then not too long after that um, you announced uh, what do we say bonsoir bon, bon voyage <laughs> that's good night yeah. <laughs> we didn't quite say good that night au revoir would be au revoir <laughs> yeah that'll do can't give you some more jeez uh, uh, it's all gone now 
Yeah, we yeah. I you know what? I I was lucky that I was coached by Wayne um, in the Australian teams that I was fortunate enough to play in. So we had a lot of really open, honest dialogue before I even made the decision. Mm. And he was across uh, the reasons why I made the decision and everything like it. And you know, Wayne, he's 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 very reasonable. Um, and he tried to do everything in his power to sort it as well, but yeah. it couldn't be done, and off we went. But um, you know, it was prob- it was good that I had a coach like Wayne that come back to because um, doesn't put too many um, you know restrictions or regulations around you when you're kind of one yeah. of the older senior well, and players. And you would have had those um, as well. The the tours, the kangaroo tours of legend, and I'm sure not too many of those stories, uh, stories can be shared. But having an insight <laughs> into Wayne. Um, during those times, um, did that help you, I suppose, see a vision for the club or see the picture where we were going? Yeah, we, I knew, yeah, definitely. I, I probably didn't real. I probably didn't think he'd get the results as quick as he did. You know, like straight away in two thousand and nine, you guys were minor premiers, and although back to back losses, you gained a hell of a lot of experience mm-hmm. around that um, and the consistency that that's required mm-hmm. to contest at the highest level too. So. Yeah, I knew Wayne would do well. Um, and then, you know, when I was fortunate enough to come back in 2010, I was probably a bit filthy. He put me in the back row mm. for a couple of games. Yeah, we've but, uh, been there, mate. <laughs> I, do, I do remember actually before you were leaving, I think it might have been close to going to the airport or one, when you decided and, and having a bit of a DNM with you about, about where it was going. I was, you know, the big, big renowned mentor and that, yeah. and asking you <laughs> questions. And yeah, I remember you saying about that, what, what it would do was good. You were always so positive about where it would go, but you said, uh, some deals fell down at uh, yeah. in our end, and I was disappointed, and still, I mean, I was captain of the club at the time, and and worked hard to get there, and but yeah, I think it it did happen for a reason. A born again saint, Mark Gaznia, back in the Dragons' den, ready to wear that famous red V jersey. His homecoming had been on the cards for weeks. Today, it became official. How did that come about? When when did you? I suppose get a call. Did you reach out? Was did George get on the phone or yeah, I George imagine Wayne and George being your manager and, and Wayne are sort of pretty close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Managing him and, and it, how did that conversation come about? Did you reach out? I, I watched you a few games over in France while you were playing on the all wing, my hit ups, good <laughs> kick, <laughs> mad kicks. I think I was the best at keeping my jersey clean. <laughs> no, look, I, yeah, Wayne was. Um, George was in constant dialogue. Uh, and it just so happened that year, I think in the Christmas time in 09, uh, George came over to France. Um, you know, I think he had some business in England. Oh, and yeah, he would have. Yeah, came, yeah never George is like. <laughs> um, and then he, he and Dousty were always in dialogue and, and the seed was planted a long time ago. They did ask me, um, not if I'd come back to the Dragons, but it was always like, you know, do you want to come back to league again? It was kind of that conversation. Yeah. Uh, and then that happened a few times and, to be honest, like I was probably a bit younger then. I was still a bit bitter about what happened and mm. um, still a little bit dirty. But it was funny. Claude, in all the wisdom, my wife, she um, she was the one that kind of said, "Well, man, there's no point being bitter. You mm. know, if you want to go back and win a comp, go back. Mm. There's no point staying over here." And you know that that's probably the shorter version. The longer version is that yeah, eventually there was um, there was an opportunity for it to happen. Um, you know, and it was it was kind of exciting because. You know, you boys that I was going back to see uh, kind of had a lot of history there with, so that was exciting. But I, I definitely did feel like I was going back to a bit of a new club. Mm. Um, you know, things had changed. A um, little bit of a different player group with the additions of Jeremy Smith, Nev, uh, Darius, Feeney. Feeney. Yeah, so, you know, there was a little bit of difference there, but um, it, it was good. It was enjoyable. It definitely felt like when I went to the first training session, it was home. And because yeah. I knew Wayne... That made it a lot easier yeah. as well, and it was just a matter of fitting into the systems that you guys had changed and implemented. Yeah, I still remember with, when Wayne asked us about it, like it was like a probably he probably already signed you, but he maybe tried to <laughs> pretend he like run a pass. Oh, geez, I might, might, might have to check this with everyone. And it was like asked us the question, oh, what would you think about having Gaz back? And there was like a resounding. Yes, especially from crackers who probably never told you he loved you. <laughs> uh, Benny Hornby's going, yeah. Like, yeah. We were all, I remember the excitement about the thing. It was keep it under wraps for most of the people and it wasn't released it, but I still remember that that moment where Wayne's probably already done the deal with you, to be fair, yeah. but he still ran it past <laughs> the playing group. It was like, just in case, he's just not, that, not sure he would have called you and said, oh, mate, um, yeah, a few of the boys have said no. So, uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, so it, I suppose get back there and, and you did notice a little bit of a difference in... Oh, without things. a doubt. Yeah, it was, you know, Wayne's got a hell of a lot of experience, you know, most experienced coach in the NRL and he'd obviously changed um, 
not only the training systems and not so, he didn't train the facilities or anything, but he, he definitely changed your mindset, you know, and you guys probably wouldn't have seen it as much because uh, you're in and around it and consumed by it the whole time. But uh, for me being outside for 18 months and then coming back in, mm. I definitely saw the difference. Um, they're definitely, probably definitely a lot more mental tough team, mm. maybe not as flamboyant, a little bit more structured, but it worked. That's what you, you were know? there it's, for, I think. Yeah. Well, and me, obviously, so. <laughs> I was there to try to keep the right edge, not turn into a mental asylum. I think <laughs> it was a, yeah, it was a, it was a ro- roller coaster of personalities uh, out on our comfortable right edge between Bowie and Matty Pryor and Jimmy. Zowie Zowie. And, yeah, as Mark Gasnier takes his place back in the red and white tonight at Cogra. He came back and uh, we quickly nicknamed the French Fry by, French fry. by a couple of people. I'm thinking, I'm thinking Sowie. Came up with a little bit it of that. Beemos, wasn't it? Beemos, yeah. You had a little bit of beef with Beemos. <laughs> he, he went away. You made his career and made him this great player and come back and then he's, <laughs> he's putting shit on you. Mate, like, how does that work? Wingers can't put shit on people. They're not smart enough. <laughs> no, yeah. it was, you know what? I'm, geez, I, as you know, Gyps, I had some nicknames over the time, but um, nicknames don't worry yeah, me too much. Yeah, French, <laughs> and the French fry was also to your stature at the time you came back and you, yeah, you, yeah. you just been living Well, that on, was probably deservedly so. Living on red wine and uh, French fries yeah. and looking... <laughs> For good. So that that game, you came back and yeah, he threw you in the back row, which is yeah. Well, the yeah, the first game, I think the first game went uh, straight into the centres, and then the second and third, I went into the back row. But I knew I was going to be nothing special when I got back. Um, that I yeah, not making excuses, but I needed the ankle surgery. That was kind of my second reco on that mm. ankle. Um, but yeah, I was six or seven kilo lighter. Um, probably made about two tackles in eighteen months and. <laughs> Um, you know, Wayne obviously realised that yeah. and even the wrestle in the game had evolved a little bit more in those 18 months that I was gone so I had to adapt to that as well so yeah, he had a method in his madness and Yeah, well I still remember you and this, uh, uh, when you came back is that that you, you've got this big streak of competitiveness that you try and hide which is which is cool <laughs> but I remember you leading <laughs> almost everything before you left, like leading almost everything and you would be doing the I'm not really trying but you can see I'm killing it <laughs> when you came back to see that um, probably the regression in where you physically were at and, and how hard you worked in a short amount of time to get back yeah. there, did you feel that um, what, what was driving you at that little period oh the the, the biggest driving factor was um, A the opportunity to come back and try to win a comp but B same reason the whole way along Gyps like you don't want to let your teammates down mm. um, and I thought the last thing I wanted to do was be that guy that let the team down when you know oh nine you guys had been minor premiers oh ten in a great position heading into um, what then was only seven and seven weeks out eight weeks out from the semi-finals. I just think it would have been um, disrespectful if I did anything but try my guts out and you know I guess over my career I was probably lucky enough to coast through certain games and you know if you got away with doing something special, people probably masked the fact that you probably could have done a lot more in that game. So I just wanted to make sure probably there was a lot more um, things revolved around effort rather than kind yeah, of effort talent. Our defense. We were quite defensive. Yeah, yeah, we were. That was we were. probably the ingredient of the strike. Yeah, which was a change to yeah. things, you know, because I hadn't been in that yeah. since you guys had implemented it. It was yeah. a big change for me. Sow it away to Boyd. Boyd gets it on to Gazia. Every fan on their feet as Gazia is wrapped up. So we got through those back couple of games in back row and centres and yeah. the competitive edge came out and you started to put on a few kilos of muscle and, <laughs> and shred the French fry fat. Um, and uh, there was, a, there was a, a certain game where you might remember it, um, South Sydney. We, we were, it was my second game. We were, uh, yeah, I think yeah. we were leading, uh, we were losing 13-12. Do you remember a, a play play near the end there? Yeah, I think it was Gyps, wasn't it? Off- was it you from Dummy Half? No, it wasn't from Dummy Half. It was Nifty, Neville Costigan. Oh, was it Nev? Yes. Okay. You touched the ball though, didn't you? Yeah. I'm pretty sure I, I, I thought made you the break. passed it to me. I gave it to you. Yeah, I yeah, got the try yeah. assist, but <laughs> I got the try assist. It's about time to return one to me. <laughs> oh, mate. Costigan Whoops. did well, found Scott, finds Nightingale. Got There's Gaznia. one to beat. Wes is there, but support's coming. Gaznia. Gaznia scores. Back in Australia, back in rugby league. Well done, Gaz. As Nathan Brown will tell you, I probably supported twice in my life the whole time I played under him. And yeah. I remember when that break was made, I played the ball. Yes, you did. So you played the ball yeah. and Neville went one way, wrong way. Didn't know it was last half. Was it, I was going to say it was last. Like, oh, <laughs> throws it down the like, sideline. We make a break and, yeah, you push from, from that 
drew the full back with it. Like, I put it on a platter. <laughs> you might have done it once or twice for me, but... The funny thing I remember about that is falling over the line, exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> you play, yeah, you played the ball. You had a tough carry out of yeah. yardage. <laughs> That's my job, sorry. Well, it was funny though, you know, like I think, I think that was a, a big thing for Wayne because the majority... Um, the majority of the time, you know, you try to come up with a special play or whatever. Mm-hmm. Whereas, I think that was probably reinforcement that the system that he worked so hard to put in place over the couple of years mm. was that a lot of it was based on effort. Mm. Um, and I think that play probably yeah. he was pretty happy with because it's I'd bought into. It was either that or it was one of those plays for Nev where it was either that or you go to video on Monday oh, and that's you just Nev, get Nev completely would have been like abused <laughs> and he's like, nah. <laughs> Nev would have been like, I, was like, I didn't know it was last. <laughs> so what if I made a break? Sorry about it. Last year's history is primarily the thing they most want to change and change big time. Skip forward a few weeks and there was another um, special moment for yourself um, when you probably did look like you had a bit more edge and, and it was back. Um, Manly qualifying final. You got a bit of early ball. Thought you were about to say 2011. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, too. no, I but, do remember the semi final. Yeah, um, uh, early ball from, from Sowie. We were a long way out. Um, what, what do you remember about that? Because I'll, I'll I remember the pass was like a big harbour bridge. Uh, <laughs> nah, Sowie. Um, yeah, I, I, I think um, the whole right edge probably, we probably started to demand the ball a little bit more yeah. throughout that semi final period, I think. Once we got the combinations right and the cohesion right, you know, Bowie was calling the plays and setting them up. Um, I think, I think it helped Sowie too because Sowie, when he wanted to run, was quite electric. Mm. Um, so, I think it helped his plays with either he had me to play to or Bowie, or then it opened up the option for himself. But yeah, there was a lot of space. I think um, poor old T Rex was playing five eight. That's the biggest yeah, five eight pretty, in the world. Pretty, yeah, they were pretty bad. They had a lot of stage. injuries. Yeah. yeah, they had a they lot of injuries and. Um, we got lucky. I think we, we won pretty easy in the end. But, yeah, it was – she was a long way to the line, put it that mm. way, Gips. Oh, mate, I just still remember going, jeez, <laughs> wonder if he's going to get caught here and I'm going to get one. wonder if he'll hit Sally on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> just, just supporting. It was like NFL running backs with no defence. Gaznier is through. Gaznier is away. 50 to go. Coming up is Nightingale. Farrah's chasing. Farrah goes for him, but Gaznier goes for the line. Yeah, I remember starting to, at, at training, starting to break down. Like when you do the left on right shots, obviously the left edge with pretty solid defence and an attack. But we're starting to get one up and compete with them and uh, layer up a bit. At, well, mate, the left Moss edge the just crew. hogged all the ball. Yeah, he took. So we needed we needed to get the ball back out there. Yeah. It was pretty much the left edge show, wasn't it? It was, and and yeah, they were they were speaking of cocky and Larry, those guys, <laughs> mate. That left edge, princess ponies, thought they were like. <laughs> Yeah, God's gift to rugby league. Yeah, I remember that starting to get a few um, wins over them of uh, how many tries we scored on left e- left first right edge. And, and Mate, I was more worried about their suntans. Yeah, oh, yeah looking was... at the set players, see Darius coming out the back. And he the was moves, always brown in the moves, middle of winter, brown and frowns. Coops. Oh, <laughs> well, how much melanin was getting around back then? Honestly, the Salarians of Wollongong would have been flooded with these pasty footballers. Canberra, what a season! This is the fairy tale. And will they be the ones to play the Dragons in sudden death with a superb record against them? Did you have a preference on playing the Raiders or the Tigers? No, I, I remember not even thinking. I just I knew we'd have the week off. And I think closetly, few of us that have been in that position before, we probably knew that we're at that stage where we'd stumbled so many times. Yeah. You know, the game before the grand final. Yeah. We had the Tigers, obviously, in 05. We had Melbourne in 06. Um, and we had, you know, 05, we just had the worst game of our lives, whereas 06 probably got beaten by a better team. Mm. So there was kind of um, not some scars there, but there was probably, put it this way, I think that game for me was more nerve-wracking than the grand final. Mm. The West Tigers will go to the grand final. What sort of emotions did you go through after 05, thinking that you felt, do you feel, feel like you just, all had a shocker and wasn't yeah. okay, or was there something yeah. else that... No, we just that? we just saved our worst game for last. Um, you know, you go back and watch that game and combination of errors and stupid decisions and brain explosions and, um, you know, and the, but we're still in the game. That was funny, like, for a while there, we're still in the game. They're eight away from the Tigers' line now. There's a decoy from Bailey and Barrett scores under the black dot. When you watch it as a whole and you think of how much effort we put into that year... 
um, definitely, definitely a missed opportunity. Yeah, and obviously on the back of you, which you didn't have to deal with the the '09 stuff, we rehashed all that sort of stuff, and the chokers tag came back up, and and it was referred yeah. back to the '05. Um, do you remember much of that 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 sort of chokers tag and and being? I don't obviously don't remember any of it from '09, but um, '05 and '06, it was always quite yeah. prominent, particularly because of our roster. Yeah. You know, we had such a strong roster, which we did. We had we had. A lot of internationals. We had a lot of state of origin players, uh, but again, we we just always stumbled at that block, and we'd always we'd always start slow as well. Like I remember, in 05, we were probably um, one or two from five. 06, from memory, we were 0 and five. Mm. Like I remember, Brownie was close to getting the sack that year, or like with all the papers and that. And then, yeah, I think we finished equal first with Parramatta, and and then Parramatta got beaten by the Cowboys in 05. So yeah, yeah I remember because yeah. Mark Riddell had he'd left that year and when we lost against the Tigers we're having a beer on the um the 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 Saturday it was and then they had to play the Cowboys and we just copped all these messages from Piggy you know telling me how he'll let us see his premiership ring Uh, and all these things (laughs) and then and then we watched him lose on uh lose on the Saturday night so yeah it was yeah big missed opportunity just a sea of red and white Welcome the Dragons to ANZ. The build up to that game, and you said nerves, nerves are out, and then the start of that game, what we didn't actually start there. Well, what were your memories on on that? Yeah, I remember it obviously being quick. I remember thinking, "Far it, I hope I get a second wind here," because the game was quite quick. Mm-hmm. It was physical, uh, and the Tigers were playing good. You know, you got to give them credit. They were playing good. They were moving the ball a lot. Um, you know, they were completing high. They were kicking well. Um, they were putting pressure on where need be. It where, where need be. But I don't know, it still didn't feel like we're going to lose. Yeah. Um, I think, I guess I got a lot of confidence in the short time I was there that the more we hung in games, the more likely we were to win. Mm. Um, so, yeah, the longer it went, the more confident I got. But I just remember it was physical, it was fast, um, and they definitely tested that right edge out there. Yeah. We saw some traffic. Yeah, yeah we did. <laughs> and we, and we, we let in a try, and uh, Jamie sort of dissected that bad read, and we just... We stuffed it up, and we were looking. Like we looked. Man, I think they made Sally make about thirty tackles, oh, which means we had to bloke. make a lot I of know, tackles. Mate, that means I was making thirty-five. <laughs> you were making fifteen. I like defending next to Jimmy because then they target him and not me. <laughs> <laughs> Tire him out for attack, but um. So we did get to the second half, and and there was a there was a certain play that uh, we'll call it your try. Yeah, I remember Sally wanting to get us the football and. I knew I'd have to be ready for it because if they played up and in hard, I had quick hands and uh, I knew my winger would catch the football, but he only needed half a chance to jibs. You said you weren't much of a support player. You backed up. I gave you another try assist on the platter <laughs> and you tripped over. <laughs> I didn't trip over. <laughs> I think I tried to step the fullback and he um, he kind of kneecapped me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cheeky buggers. And then J- J- Jibs actually gets a little bit of white line fever, truth be known. When he, when he's, Super. <laughs> yeah. Ten metres out from the line. Tigers in trouble. On the ropes, in fact. Young got it back on the inside and they're over to score. And the number five, Jason Nightingale, is the scorer. The funny thing was, it's probably a really good play because they'd scrambled so hard and they were short on the other side and we'd had so much success on that left side. Mm. The forwards just come hard out at Dino and then... Kept travelling. Gyps straight through. Good times, good times. It's a high lollipop pass out to Galloway. Galloway throws a dummy. Galloway gallops. He gets the ball away to Bo Ryan. Ryan puts in a kick to the centre. The biggest thing I remember about that game is when, remember when they made the break right the on end, full time end, and Bowie yeah, kicked it. Yeah. And I remember going far out. Thank God he kicked it. Because there was still, I think there was about 15 seconds, 20 seconds. Yeah, yeah, there was still a bit of time. But, and I didn't even know Benny, Benny Craze missed that tackle when he said like it could have been the worst moment of his career on Keithy Galloway or something to get, let him go through. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing was... Bloody left edge. Yeah, so the reason Bowie kicked is Dino's chase on the inside of like that. And yeah, that was... I don't know why he kicked either, but happy he did. I'm sure... I was happy he did. That was like the relief after that game. Mm. I don't know, it was probably almost the same amount of relief as winning the grand final. Mm. The minor premiers are into a grand final. So we're in grand final week. You said you haven't been there. Do you remember much about... Um, our, our prep I think he tried to ch- change it again um, saying in the, the far east far eastern suburbs in Roosters heartland of, of Bondo Beach do you remember much about, about the, the social side and the re- downtime side of those weeks funny choice wasn't it we were going into uh, Roosters yeah. heartland yeah. into camp at um, the Swiss Grand but yeah. everyone wanted to 
Mm. That was the funny thing, you know. I think um, we're lucky enough; everyone really enjoyed each other's company. There was a good balance there too, because you know we're pretty good at getting away from football when the mm. opportunity come up. We'd train intense when we had to, but you know when we wanted to get away from it, we got away from it. So there, there was plenty of places to go over coffee, go up to the movies. It was, and we, I remember Wayne when he brought it up; it was pretty unanimous. Only Benny Hornby didn't want to leave Wollongong. <laughs> Everyone else. That's because he thought he had to pay for coffee. <laughs> once he found out he didn't have to oh, pay, yeah. he was sweet. Oh yeah, once guys are shouting on the shout train, <laughs> it was it was all over. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that was that that getting away from footy and and the week they pack in a lot. You remember those the week the best thing Wayne obviously had uh, you know enough experience in grand final week and I remember Wayne clearly saying you know don't don't treat the week as a burden. Um, make sure you embrace it. Make sure you uh, realise the opportunity that's in front of you. And uh, I thought we all did that really well. If yeah. there was a promotion, we, you know, no one ever blew up. That Thursday when you have the grand final breakfast, yeah, the footy it. show, um, you know, go you're always harbor. signing after training. Yeah, then you go to the harbour. There were so Train many things. Oakey, yeah, to. so many things. But it was funny when you get to train, it was such a buzz because there was such a crowd there. I think it was just it was just a really good week. And I know, you know, Rolls is one of my best mates and speaking to him, he's weak. They don't look back at it as fondly because they lost, but... Mm-hmm. Um, it was just such an amazing week and uh, I think um, if there's one thing you want to experience in football, I think that's definitely it. Like if you're lucky enough to go on and win that whole week mm. and then win in the grand final is just such an amazing feeling. Yeah, and that, obviously both of us, Dragons, St. George Juniors yeah. and, and the boys, a lot of the lot of Wollongong Steelers Juniors. Yeah. Um, do you remember that? that? Yeah, being able to go and train at, at, at Jubilee Oval. Yeah. And uh, the crowd there, I, the, I remember that. That was both times. Yeah, I remember we, but, but we, when we trained there, the crowd, like I think we had ten or eleven thousand people mm, or something. It was like wow. Yeah, it was like a, you know, training try, and the crowd <laughs> yeah, starts oh, cheering. Mate, <laughs> Dean Young in his element yeah. of the training tries from dummy half. <laughs> There's a couple moments. of suitcases oh, from Dan Hunt. There was yeah, definitely a few different running styles and... going on, but no, it was just, it was such a good feeling. And as I said, it was, it was, it was. You know, credit to the club that mm. I think there was 13 or 14 local juniors mm. out of that 17 that played on grand final night. Um, you know, there was probably only what, Nev, um, Jeremy Smith, Fiend. Darius and yeah. Fiends. Yeah. Yeah. So probably 13 yeah. local juniors. So as I said, I did feel, I definitely did feel, you know, and I'm not making that up, some remorse for those, you know, Jason Rolls, Luke yeah. Bailey, Trent Barrett, Piggy uh, Timo. Nah, <laughs> Piggy. He only played, I think, a total of 80 minutes in his career at the Dragons. <laughs> Two minutes a game. But, yeah, it was just – it was such a good week. Mm. Such a good week. So, we'll regress a bit to, to grand final day. What do you remember about the, the atmosphere, the build-up to running out on the field, I suppose? I was pretty good. I, I felt good about the week. I felt good in my preparation. It was such a hot day. And then it started to rain. Yeah. And I was like, you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, the dry weather special. Uh, yeah. <laughs> of all the times to rain. Um <laughs> But other than that, it was it was good preparation. I remember there was a lot of traffic on the way. Yeah. That was probably a bit Sour of a dampener. Was yeah. yeah, there was a lot of traffic getting out the home bush. But then once we we're in the dressing room, it just all felt normal. Yeah. You know, it was back to I was lucky enough that um, you know we had a pretty good crew as far as being relaxed in the dressing room. I know the majority of my career I sat next to Coops and. We never really got too serious about things, although we knew what we had to do. Tom's kickoff again, guys? Yeah, yeah. It was always, you know what, there's some personalities that prefer it that way and then yeah. there's other people that go the other way. But yeah. I, I was, yeah, I felt... Beamos. <coughs> Bubsy. <laughs> Bubsy. I felt, I felt confident in our preparation. Mm. I really did. I knew there'd be some nerves and I knew it would probably be a nervous start. Mm. But, um, yeah, there was nothing... Didn't go into that game with one bit of doubt in my mind. That doesn't mean I knew we were going to win or anything like that. I just I felt confident in our preparation. So we, we had a little secret trick, which we hadn't really had all year, um, a secret play called the French fry. Do you remember that? And do you remember practicing it? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, I did. Because what happened against the Tigers mm. and they were playing such hard up and in, uh, it was something we had to practice because I said to Sal, if, you know, I'll be ready. If you see them coming up and in just because he was such a good kicker, I said, you just put it in the spot and I'll, I'll be there. And you'll know, you'll know probably because I've never really hit a hole in my life, you'll know that when I want the kick because I'll be up leading, flat right. and pushing hard. And um, 
that was the perfect opportunity in the yeah. grand final because yeah. it was off the back of the Brett Morris offload. Yeah. And his foot definitely wasn't in touch. <laughs> it was off the back of that offload and as we shift, they kind of come up so hard and uh, Mini had obviously tracked to the other side where we are shifting and, yeah. and it's rare that you catch Mini out of position, but... Well, luckily we did. Hornby knows there's a chance. Soward puts a little kick in. There's a try for Gesnia. Gesnia, I think, has got the first try off an absolute bottler of a kick from Soward. I remember practicing. I don't know if we practiced at Cogger. There was 10,000 people there, but was it Redfern or Erskineville Oval or something? I think we practiced it at Erskineville. Yeah. I think we did it once at Cogger. Because there were so many cameras, we didn't want to do it too much. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I remember, yeah, we definitely we, we had it in mind. And it wasn't really in Wayne's style or, or that to come up with match like set, no. set plays like that as well. I think it was a bit of yours and Sowie's initiative to to put that together, and Wayne gave it more than his blessing. When yeah, when exactly. Well, you know what Wayne's like. Like he's yeah. As long as there's some logic behind it, um, there's practice behind it, mm. and and some you know thought into the implementation of it, he's happy to go with it. So. Mm. I, I, you know, it was just it was it's funny how it works out. You know, it wasn't there wasn't any hesitation on my part. I knew Sally was going to kick yeah. it, and I just had to time it right. That's yeah. the biggest thing. It was, and and I remember just that. I thought I wasn't was going to get the doubt. ball down for a while. I, was, I, I thought was never in doubt. But it was one of those <laughs> never in doubt sort of moments where it probably was in doubt, but you just. <laughs> On that buzz, we. I tell you what, I had some people after the game show me their ticket for first try scorer. Oh, the, the really? Tab must have lost some money that oh, night. Oh, mate, I'm. Oh, geez, yeah, there would have been friends of friends of friends, of <laughs> course. <laughs> uh, on, the, on the old French fry move, someone that maybe watched training as yeah. well. The people, yeah. one of those ten thousand people watching us, like, hey, that's a random <laughs> kick they're putting on play three. <laughs> Getting off to that start did give us a lot of confidence, and and the energy was was pretty pretty up after that point, and then um, things. Didn't quite go our way. No, we, we we made a lot of errors, didn't we? Yeah, and yeah, guilty of a couple of them. And oh no, Graham I think I think it was you know what you're saying. It was so just Dewey. like what well, was Dewey. There was some nerves. Um, the prior week was an intense game, mm. um, and 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 you know equally so for the Roosters as well. So I think both teams were a bit tentative, a bit nervous, and then it was just a matter of who that was going to settle into the groove first. Yeah, that's that why was probably them. To be fair, they were. I think it was eight six at half eight, time, si- eight six. Yeah. But as you know, we went into half time and not not a worry in the world. No. You know, I think Wayne said about six words and it was probably a few other words spoken, and yeah. then everyone was just waiting to get back out for, <laughs> back onto the field. Hundred percent. His um his his six words went something along the lines of "If you do this, you will win." Yeah, yeah. And then he finished with, "That's not the dragons." Yeah, go Could, show them dragons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dan, Dano um still uses that like it's his line <laughs> you can imagine <laughs> so yeah it was just such I think I think that helped too you know because we had a lot of inexperience as far as grand final experience I think Wayne's calmness rubbed off, rubbed off on us a little bit as well and you talk about that sort of the, the style of that we've been playing all year um, that building pressure um, how did you feel when things started to to go in our favour and, and momentum started to go with us bloody good yeah. it was a good one that like I remember once you got your double, I was pretty confident we were going to win. And then I think it was when poor Todd Carney got hurt, didn't he? Yeah. By that stage, we had it wrapped up. I remember, you know, we were kind of happy. Yahoo and, and then and, we were Yahoo and, and you you told us to just get, you were Yahooing with us, and then Bowie told us to get in line. You're like, oh yeah, geez, get, come on, Sally, Gypsy, get get in line. We've got to defend. You went, oh sorry, Bowie, yeah, yeah. Oh, and then you jumped on. Oh yeah, they can't. They shouldn't be celebrating. <laughs> Good cop, bad cop. Uh, yeah, nice. No, it was it, it was um, it was so good. I think um, particularly because the crowd knew by then as well, mm. you know. But we we had to work. We the good thing the the biggest thing um, I liked about it was that we had a bit of cohesion out there on the right mm. edge, and then you know, see how we had yeah. some confidence so to was, throw some passes there. Was there was a stat. And, there was a stat from that game. Benny Cray had been the best, uh, most effective decoy runner ever done by any individual ever to play rugby league that year that game after your try you became the best decoy of the 2010 grand right. final and yeah someone got to benefit from that it's me and Darius just being him try assists and quality not quantity <laughs> those decoys though I think it, well, you talk about that up and in defence they were well and I was just lucky kind of it was BJ Leilua on the wing mm. back then for the Roosters he kind of only had eyes for me mm. and Did then you, you've and then, well, it became pretty again. Yeah. What do you mean again? <laughs> then once we got those two tries, when we went back up the other end, um, and I think it was about 13, 14 minutes to go when 
Toddy got injured or maybe it was even less. I, I can't remember. But I remember we had the game wrapped up. Yeah. To be brutally honest, I think my first emotion once we knew we had the grand final one was probably relief. Mm. And I know that sounds wrong in a way, but um, given the past and given that you've kind of chased it for so long, um, that was that was the initial thing. And then, and then there was you know kind of a bit of nostalgia there about um, the journey, and then coming back from France mm. and um, having the opportunity. So, yeah, I think it was it was all that, and then to get in the dressing rooms. And see all the families as well. Mm. I think that's when this Some real celebration yeah. kind of, you know, and just seeing everyone so happy for their family members, and you know, because they play such a big part in your life. It was that was that were probably the different steps of emotion. But yeah, you kind of, you know, I think as a kid, you think that you're just going to go nuts after the game because mm. you win a grand final. Whereas it's not quite yeah. like I guess everyone experiences different yeah, like exactly. Trent Merrin probably felt that way because yeah. he's a young kid and first year in first grade and thought how good is this you get a grand final but yeah, it's funny that different perspective of the relief like I had a little bit of relief but having not been through so yeah, many exactly. years I had and Darius talks a lot talked a lot about he was the Trent Merrin at the 2006 grand final he was like yeah. oh we won the grand final party time like Mez would have thought and sort of halfway through the different perspectives of different age groups yourself Dino Benny yeah. Harvey been doing it for so long um, me and BMOS sort of middle and Darius in the middle of our careers and then and then young Mez who just yeah how, how good's this roller coaster and ride I've just jumped on the back of. Yeah. And I think it helped having those experienced got dubs that have been there, done that. Jeremy Smith. Yeah. You know, it definitely helps when you've got a couple of people that have had that experience of grand final week and obviously the coach. So, you know, I think they all definitely played a part. Yeah, definitely I think you mentioned Jezza, like he's he's bit of a glue for, yeah, for, he's, for he's the good mood the, yeah. The, yeah whether it be negotiating down on reps on on fitness or yeah. <laughs> or just telling everyone it's going to be okay or being a standover man when he needs to yeah. to, to, to opposition and teammates so he led by example though didn't he yeah 100 percent. and then nev yeah. you know nev nev was outstanding he's just he just rips in whenever need be but that's that's the thing about yeah. that group wasn't it you know everyone yeah. Everyone played a role, and even if it wasn't probably their best role that suited them, they still did the best they could in that role they got thrown into. Enjoy this moment, Dragons fans. Here it is. What are your memories of of our slow celebrations? <laughs> um, well, obviously, you, you, we had the um, kind of presentation with the fans back at Cogger Oval, and then we had to have one at Wollongong mm. the next morning. So... I guess probably we didn't get a chance to enjoy each other's company. When I say enjoy each other's company, that you know, if you're going to have a few Intimately, beers and yeah. celebrate, um, it was the Monday, mm. and then we had the signing day on the Wednesday mm. or the Tuesday, and then to be fair, a lot of people wanted to go back home as well with their yeah. family. So it's not the party that you think it was going to be, yeah. but I definitely still enjoyed myself. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that you, yeah, another nickname of the hurricane. Um, <laughs> anyone that's had enough beers with you, I know you're mature in that these days. And the legendary stories are probably few and far between nowadays, but I um, couldn't believe there was people pulling out sleeping bags at Cogger Oval. <laughs> you after, were not happy. I wasn't happy. Just well, got, we just won a premiership. Won a premiership and there's people going to sleep because they cut us off. Someone might have had some spare supplies or sort of. <laughs> I think a hit there was a couple of cases. There's a couple down of yeah, Cogrovers got that. Well, before it got rent, that that back bit where you could. Well, yeah, we got well, as Benny Hornby got the keys to Wollongong. You had the keys to the cellar in um in, in Cogrovers. <laughs> that was your trade off for that. So, um, yes, yeah, so they were going to sleep and and you weren't happy with that. So I wasn't happy with actually, that. Actually, there was no yeah. So. For those, Gaz would not let people sleep um, after <laughs> winning a grand final, which fair enough. Well, I thought, yeah. No, and I then, thought. and then there's that. Uh, there's, there's also uh, your famous polo. That polo you wore that from the ga- to the game, probably after the game in the sheds. <laughs> this, the next day, out to the place we went, the nightclub <laughs> on Monday night. I think you might have even had it on Tuesday <laughs> at, at Youngie's Pub. That. Proud, if, oi, mate! If, <laughs> proud, the polo, that red polo. I still imagine the. Well, I wanted to leave my jersey on, and yeah. then you know, everyone was like, "Mate, you stink!" And that's why I loved it when the I saw Victor. The polo didn't stop you. Didn't stop you. No, I, yeah, I know that's a stupid thing, isn't it? I might as well run with the jersey, although the jersey stunk a little bit more. <laughs> that's why it was cool to see Victor in his whole playing yeah, kit the yeah, first time yeah. they won the grand yeah. final. Um, well, it was funny because I remember I remember Sean Timmons always saying that he's like, if I ever won a grand final, I just wouldn't would not get out of my 
get out of my gear. I remember you sort of trying to refuse to take it off. Yeah. And then it was the polo. The polo was the subs in. So the polo was your, no one, no Mad Monday kit. It was just that polo for the next three days. So, um, yeah. But it was funny because we, and that was the first time, I, that was the first time and the last time that I've ever watched the grand final replay was mm. Mad Monday. Yeah. You know, and that was, that was kind of cool because as you know, Mad Mondays can get a bit loose or whatever, but everyone sat there yeah. and watched exactly. the grand watched final. It. It does help when it gets knocked back a day to Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mad Monday on Tuesdays. Uh, yeah, it was. It, we were we were a bit out of energy by then, so really it, sit down, chill. The funny thing is, in hindsight, I think the best part about celebrations was the dressing room with all the families. Yeah, yeah. beers. Or like, no, no one was in a rush to get yeah. out of there. Everyone, really you know, fans. could see the trophy. The kids were entertained, running the mark. They could see everything as well. Um, the wives, the mothers, the partners, Albert. Yeah, you know, with uh, Craig Young and. Yeah. What Sharon had done for him over yeah. his whole career. There yeah. was just so so much history of people so helping one death. another out. Yeah, that and that's why the you know, obviously to the see everyone was, that happy yeah. at that one time and everyone cool. being able to enjoy. That's what never ha- in, in footy teams you never really get out to share that with no like, with your other half or no. your or your kids or anything like that. To be able to share that and bring them into that big huge room in in Homebush was yeah. yeah that was like a. A cool time to party. It was. It was sick. Bring all those people in. And, yeah. It was. And to be honest, it probably wouldn't work if you brought it together for a function. It was just because it was straight off the back of that mm. moment, winning yeah. the grand final. Everyone in there was. It was special. Yeah, it was. Um, well, anything else? No. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Mark, on the on My the pleasure, True Believers. Congratulations podcast. on the new career, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, sweet. <laughs> On the next episode of the True Believers podcast, I'm sitting down with my mate, Dragons 2010 back rower, Ben Cray. At the finish of that game and losing that game how we did with the team we had, I remember being more in shock 